In September of last year, Shelly Colley's husband and their newborn baby were being escorted through the halls of a North Carolina hospital in the early hours of the morning on a Saturday when the incident occurred. Colley had fallen into a coma shortly after giving birth to her kid, and the others felt that it was time for her family to say their ultimate farewell to their daughter. Upon being rushed to the hospital, her blood pressure had dropped to dangerously low levels, 60 over 40, according to doctors who later notified the family, and her heart rate had risen to dangerously high levels, more than 180 beats per minute. Every artificial breath, Colley's husband, Jeremy Colley, recalled how he was connected to what doctors referred to as the last chance ventilator. The ventilator, he said, pushed air into her lungs with such force that it rattled her hospital bed, according to Colley. The hospital staff, on the other hand, had one more notion that they wished to put into action. We were told by the personnel that we should take the baby down and place her skin to skin with Shelly, her husband said in an interview with the Washington Post. Doctors thought that Shelly would be able to smell, feel, and hear the baby if she was awake enough to do so and that this would provide her with the drive to fight even while she was unconscious. That required her participation in the war at this time. And they believe that Ryan Grace Colley, who had been born to a few hours before, might be the only one who could assist them in their endeavor. They placed the newborn on their mother's chest, according to Jeremy Colley. The child immediately fell asleep on the spot. He says with a chuckle, according to the father, we pinched Ryan and tickled her a little bit so Shelley would hear her cry. Doctors informed Jeremy Colley that when the newborn wailed, her mother's vital signs jumped, which caused her to lose consciousness. Several of his sources informed him that it was possible that it had provided him with the motivation she needed to keep on. Shelly Colley was greeted by the sight of her newborn daughter the following morning when she awakened. It was a bizarre sense, that as if I was caught between a dream and reality, the author described the experience. She shared her story with the Washington Post about her life-changing experiences. However, every time I glanced at her, I recall thinking to myself how beautiful she was. It was as if it had happened yesterday. The fact that I had been sleeping for a week was something I didn't realize at the time. It was, on the other hand, my first experience with my daughter. I was completely taken aback, I said. As of now, Jeremy Colley's 35 years old and works as the director at the YMCA in Concord, North Carolina. Now 24, Shelley Colley is pursuing a degree in nursing at a local community college. However, the couple maintain that they are not aiming to become pregnant. They were not attempting to prevent being pregnant either. When they eventually succeeded, they were overjoyed. As it turned out, it was her first and only pregnancy as well as her final one. Shelly Colley had planned to give birth naturally, and she and her husband enrolled in weekly classes on natural childbirth to prepare for this. She stated that the idea of having a child with a person you love is a life-changing event, and she was looking forward to sharing the experience with him. In the words of the father, we had a strategy, and then it was taken away from us. According to Colley, she was diagnosed with a blood clot in her thigh around one month before her due date. Doctors recommended blood thinners to patients in order to treat the problem. Her water broke on the 5th of September 2014, according to her records. In order to ascertain the pace of her labor, she and her husband traveled to the Carolinas Medical Center Northeast in Concord. It never happened in the first place. She was diagnosed with preeclampsia, which is marked by unusually high blood pressure as well as health syndrome, which is a condition that has the potential to be life-threatening. A cesarean section was the only option available, she alleges, after doctors warned her that it was the only option available. According to her watch, she was wheeled into the operating room at approximately 11.30 p.m. the same night. Patient who refers to remain anonymous explains, I was telling the doctor that I was concerned that I wasn't going to wake up. It's still a mystery to me why I had that sensation even after all these years. During my pregnancy, I got a sense that something was going to go wrong, and I believe it was a premonition that something was going to go wrong. Ryan was born on September 5th at 11.44 p.m. local time in the state of Washington. She weighed 7 pounds 11 ounces and was 21 inches in both height and length. She was in the arms of her father within minutes of being rescued. They simply informed me that Shelly was going to be in recovery and that it would be a few days before she could be reunited with us. Then she received word that his wife's health had deteriorated significantly. During her examination, the physicians discovered that Kali had fluid in her lungs and she was having difficulty breathing on her own, according to the doctors. Medical investigators discovered that Ryan's weight was holding the blood clot in place and that she was born the blood clot traveled to Kali's lung, causing a pulmonary embolism to occur very quickly. 
In an interview with the Washington Post, she revealed that we didn't know how we were going to make it and she hadn't had any contact with her child before. It was important for us to know when she realized she was going to die, we could tell the baby your mother hugged you. After discussing the situation with Manos and other members of the Collie's medical team, Collie agreed to the idea of Ryan being placed on his chest. The skin-to-skin method is intended to deepen the bond that exists between mother and her infant, a practice that, according to medical professionals, has visible benefits for both the mother and the child involved. This physical touch has been shown to aid in the development of the infant's brain, as well as the stabilization of the heart rate and the maintenance of the infant's core body temperature. According to research, it also aids in the preparation of both the mother and the infant for their first experience with breast milk breastfeeding. When babies are carried around on their mother's chest on a daily basis, it looks to be beneficial to them. Collie's nurse claimed that because Shelly was in crisis, we thought that we should try to keep the baby with her as much as possible in the hopes that she could hear her baby screaming out of somewhere in the back of her mind. As a result of their efforts to persuade the newborn to cry, the medical team noted a slight uptick in Collie's vital signs. Following his wife's coma, Jeremy Colley attempted to establish a bond between her and her newborn daughter as the week continued, according to Jeremy Colley. To allow Ryan to be able to smell her mother, he wrapped him in one of Shelley's t-shirts, placed him in the car. Jeremy Colley described her death as a challenging emotional and spiritual journey for our family in the months following her death. There were fingerprints of God all over the place. In order to provide Shelley Colley with the care she required to survive, doctors had put her in a coma. The blood thinner she was taking, causing her to lose blood, according to her husband, Jeremy Colley, who claimed she was pumped with 21 units of blood to restore what she had lost. In order to keep her body functioning, IVs were inserted into her veins. Ventilators were fitted and a heart-lung bypass device was installed. According to Jeremy, all the physicians concur that they would not have made it to that point if Shelley hadn't made it through the night. According to the couple, Ryan was the deciding factor in their decision, and Manus, the nurse, said, that's what I'd like to think in my heart. Shelley Colley awoke on September 12, 2014, seven days after giving birth and eight days after entering a coma. She had been in a coma since giving birth. She'd been unconscious for eight days at that point. In response to Jeremy Colley's question about if she recognized who I was and whether she recalled my name, she replied in the most breathy voice, to which Jeremy Colley noted, that was one of my clearest memories, and it was such a historic occasion, says the author. It was still possible to see her eyes even though she was paralyzed. As soon as I brought Ryan into the room, her eyes fixated on him and informed his wife's condition. No words came out of her mouth. She only stared back at the woman. I sat Ryan on her chest and placed him there. A photographer stood by her recording the moment. Collie glanced at her baby for the first time, her eyes half closed and her mouth gaping wide open in surprise. She raised her eyes to Jeremy Collie, who pulled her hair away from her face and inquired, Are you happy? She replied, Collie had a friendly smile and nodded. I've got some stories to tell you, he said after that. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.